Hello everyone, Christopher Beast here, and today I will be covering the new 1.0.0.11 experimental build that came out earlier this week. This is our first update in quite a bit of time, and is our first update with the one number moniker, meaning it's a pretty big milestone update. And as a result, it's pretty big. It's quite a large update. This update features the much requested helicopters, a game master overhaul, changes to damage, changes to vehicle management, and many other changes. The build, as I've said, is quite large, and due to this, I'm going to be sticking mostly to the major changes that occurred with this build for this video. Because when it comes to bug fixes, minor tweaks, and other things that are more in the back door, not only is there just a lot of it, but a lot of it's really buggy. And I feel like talking about it before it's really cleaned up is a bit of a false sell, because I feel like a lot of these features might not even make it into the genuine build, simply because of how buggy it is. So all of that aside, let's just get right into this. Let's start off with the obvious and most interesting change for a lot of people. The long-awaited helicopters are finally here. Now, I've never been one who is really good at flying these things, but for a lot of players, these high-flying support vehicles have been long requested since the game's initial release, so to finally see them in the game outside of modding is a beautiful sight. The helicopter is very fast and can carry soldiers from one end of the map to the other quite quickly and far quicker than any previous method could, allowing for greater ease of transportation of troops or even supplies to vital fronts, as it allows the storage of supplies, which can basically make this thing a traveling supply node for both soldiers and, as I said, supplies to allow you to really reinforce your nodes in the conflict. Next. We have new support service changes to vehicles. These new support structures allow for the construction of sites that let you repair and refuel vehicles, as well as allowing greater and faster resupply and healing at bases. This change is pretty cool. I'm trying to put even more focus on the importance of sending supplies to fringe bases, as there will now be more of a reason to stop in at these bases, reinforce them, and because of the helicopters, to actually get the use supplies you need to these places. So it's overall just a really good amalgamation of changes that connect to each other. Now then, damage changes. There is now secondary damage which occurs when supplies and fuels catch fire. These damage may cause explosions, which will also do damage, and then these effects also exist in vehicles, which will cause the same effects as before, but also deterioration of the supplies within vehicles. Characters now also feature a separate response if they are shot in the helmet, but the shot does not hit them in the head which should allow for a greater response and more reactive response to what is occurring on the battlefield from AI. A big change for me this update was certainly the Game Master changes. First, Game Master scenarios can now be paused or unpaused, and during the pause state, well, it's self-evident that nothing moves. This can allow for greater planning and setup for your scenarios in Game Master, this planning and setup can really allow a much greater degree of freedom and really interest when it comes to setting up these scenarios. Freedom and interest that is rewarded by the new save and load scenario options. You are me, or anyone who has been thinking like me and is addicted to the Game Master since day one, this is a saving grace. Finally, a way to save our scenarios and reload them on a later time. Which means if you put hours into a base or a build or a scenario or a situation, you can save it and load it whenever you so want. Granted, at the moment, this is refined and kept to only single player. So you can't exactly share it with your friends at the moment. This change though is massive, and it means you no longer just have to accept that your hard work and build is gone at the end of a session. It really creates more of a reason to build beautiful scenarios. As I said earlier though, this build has a metric ton of bugs, so I'm not going to really go into the bug fixes or general gameplay fixes, because to go into them when the game isn't in a stable or reliable state just seems to me to be a bit dishonest about the state of the build. This build is for content, not for bug fixes and tweaks, and while there are bug fixes here, the game won't be less buggy in this build at the moment, so to list off all the changes I just don't think is necessary. However, I do know that if there are future builds, I will definitely talk about the bug fixes when the game feels a bit more stable. Overall, those are the changes in this build. If there were some I missed, I'll be sure to cover them when there are more stable or more built upon options in further updates that are planning to come to this build. Because the devs have said that they are planning on updating this build in the coming weeks before releasing it in about a month's time, 
to the full release build. But that's really all I've got for y'all today. This has been Christopher Beast, and I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope to see you all, well, next time.